once upon a time in one of the temples in India, it happened. You know, in those days, when there was no difficulty in having enough rice, every day they used to cook a lot of rice, <coughs> and make it into balls, put it in a big tray, offer it to God, and certainly God doesn't eat anything. So they take it and give it as prasad to all the people. They make so much of rice that the people, whoever comes to the temple, pilgrims, sadhus, the temple, working people, the temple, everybody gets one big ball. But one person always gets two balls. <clears throat> so one day, the trustee of the temple came to see what's happening, and he noticed that everybody got one, but one person got two. So he questioned the person who distribu distributes the food. Why is he giving him two? What does he do here? Hmm? He does nothing. Then you shouldn't be giving him two. But that is what uh, was ordered before. The previous trustee asked us to do that, and we are doing it. Ah, then there must be a reason. I will ask him. He went to the person. Hey, Sadhu, why should you get two shares? Well, everybody gets one. I don't know. What do you do here? I do nothing. It means you are sitting quiet here? Yes, I know. I sit quiet. That's all. He thought for a minute and said, Still, I don't understand. Eh? You do nothing, sitting quiet, and you get two. Well, that seems to be the most difficult job. <laughs> what is more difficult than sitting quiet? Well, I don't know. Maybe you can try. All right. I'll try. He went there and sat for a while. Then, see, I did it. No, you didn't do. What do you mean by I didn't do? You didn't sit quiet. I was sitting quiet. No, you were doing business in your shop. Then he realized he was not sitting quiet. He was thinking of his shop, doing what is today's business. Then he realized, sitting quiet is not that easy. Physically you may sit quiet, but real sitting quiet means mentally also, with a quiet mind. Chitta vritti nirodham. That's the most difficult thing. Hmm? So he said, 
now I understand. Give two more to him. <laughs> so since that day, for the sadhu who sits quiet, got double dose. That's what, huh? Many people say, oh, I'm observing mauna. I'm observing silence. Even they put a note here, silence. <laughs> Do they really observe silence? Constantly writing something and showing it? Or making signs? <laughs> only the mouth doesn't talk. If you talk, only the lips could move. Nothing else need to move. But when you observe silence, the whole body has to move. <laughs> what kind of silence is that? Hmm? So keeping the mind silent hmm, is the most difficult job. Hmm? That is the aim behind all the practices and behind the yogic practices. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha. Hmm? No waves in the mind. Hmm? The mind should be still like a quiet pond hmm? without any waves hmm? deflecting everything in its own condition. That's why it can be practiced daily, at least a little while, every day. Hmm? Our minds do not even stay quiet when we sleep. We think we are sleeping, but we don't. Hmm? It's only in sleep you travel a lot. Hmm? You think a lot. Hmm? All the desires that you couldn't experience in waking life, you want to experience in dreaming life. Hmm? All the good things or bad things. Hmm? Like uh, what Vidyananda said, hmm? if you are angry with somebody and you feel like spanking, you stop spanking because you know hmm? he is stronger than you. Hmm? If you get him, give him one hit, he will give you double to you. So you don't. But when do you take out the anger? In your dream. Hmm? You dream him in your dream and you hit him. Hmm? So in dream we have more activity. Hmm? And in, sometimes in sleep there's no activity in the mind, but the mind doesn't know it is quiet. In the absence of any awareness, unconscious, when the mind becomes unconscious, even of itself, that's what you call sleep. But there is another higher sleep which is known as sleepless sleep. Jagra hmm? Shushupti. Hmm? The mind sleeps, at the same time it knows it is sleeping. Conscious sleep. Hmm? That is what you call samadhi. Only Jeevan Muktas can sleep like that. They do sleep, but in a superconscious state. As human beings, we developed our consciousness little by little to become human beings ultimately. 
the same awareness is in every species of life inanimate things like stone and metal and other things they do have awareness but they sleep they don't know what they are doing but slowly it wakes up in the plant life and then further waking up in animal life and further more in in human life awareness is greater in human life it is in that respect human beings are superior to other species but we should not stop there there's a further step the fourth step or turiya the conscious sleep step you keep your awareness keep your conscience always even during the daily activities stand apart become a witness and allow the mind and body to do their work that witness bhavana witness attitude is the real act of the spirit in you or to use the word god the god in you or the image of god in you in that sense you don't do anything but you witness everything it's your mind which does a lot of things and the body puts it into action but your self pure self becomes a witness always it always happens in everybody's life but you don't put yourself in the witness stand you become a plaintiff or defendant it is the witness verdict is more important than the plaintiff or defendant jurors see the witness you have seen it now recently hmm hmm they didn't worry about huh? what the prosecutor said or what the defendants lawyers said they wanted to see what the witnesses say they even recalled the witness how many of you watched that hmm you watched that good you know what i am talking about huh how many do you watch carefully nobody huh nobody watched huh can i have a hand how many have watched oj's case shame on you <laughs> huh? the whole world watched hmm? everything came to a stand still on the day last day hmm
given the monitors at the airport. Huh? <coughs> How many people would have forgotten their flights? Huh? Hmm? <coughs> That's the case of the age. Hmm? But with all that arguments, the jurors thought what the witnesses say. So, among all the people, who are the important people there? Neither the prosecutors nor the defendant lawyers. The witnesses are the key people. Their word is taken care of. In this court, There's constantly a conflict. One side plaintiff, one side defendant. Hmm? Hmm? That's what depicted as Kurukshetra Yuddha hmm? between Pandavas and Kauravas. Hmm? But there was a witness who didn't do anything. No weapon, no fighting, nothing. And Arjuna just followed the witness and won the case. So the witness is the most important person. We always have a witness. Whatever the mind does, you cannot hide from that witness. Constantly watching, watching, watching. He may tell it to others in a beautiful way, a beautiful lie, but your own conscience knows that you are telling a lie. You can't avoid that. We should learn to listen to the conscience. If our conscience says it's wrong, stop it. Don't do it. Always listen to that inner voice. As Mahatma Gandhi puts it, the Antaratma, the inner self the voice of the inner self. It always talks to us, but we seldom listen. Why? Because we are talking constantly other things. The mind is busy in talking so many things. It's louder than the voice of the inner self. So we don't hear that. That is the reason why we should learn to cut down the outside voice, like voice of the mind, the noise of the mind. I can't even call it voice of the mind. It's noise of the mind. Hmm? And that subsides, the inner voice can be heard well. That's what we do in meditation. 